Good morning. Would you all please join me in the opening prayer? And stand. Thank you. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us continue to pray with the collective prayer in unison. We come to this place from all walks of life experiences and backgrounds. We come to share in an encounter of the divine through music, liturgy, scripture, and teaching. We come not to be entertained or pacified. We come not to feel good about ourselves, but rather to be challenged and held accountable to God and each other as we search for meaning and purpose in our life. We come to feel the Holy Spirit stirring in our hearts and minds to action the week ahead. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And now, if you would please join in the singing of Come Singers to the Gospel Feast. I would invite you to be seated as we come to a time of, of prayer in, in our worship service. And to prepare our hearts and minds for that, we're going to sing through the CARES course twice. And as, as we do so, Alan and I will be through the congregation to collect any prayers that might be written on the communication cards.
This morning, I, I want to begin with uh, some joys. It's been a tough week, and we'll, we'll certainly get to that in just a second. But a couple of joys that, uh, that were on my heart this morning is that over the summer youth program, which concluded this week, that we had 107 kids registered and attended classes over the last five weeks. Isn't that great? Yeah. So special thank you to, to Trish Starbuck and Melissa Brown for their leadership and for all of the, the teachers who have come and given of their time uh, to share their gifts with our, our younger uh, community members and as well as the parents who made sure that uh, the kids got here. And I know in personal experience that that can be kind of rough, getting them up. So not as bad as getting up for school, but but still, you know, it's scheduled, so, you know, it can be, can be rough. So thank you to all who were involved uh, with that again this summer, and uh, great success, and we look forward to next summer. I was trying to look for an affirmation. Okay, good, good. All right, I got one at least, right? <laughs> and, then, um, and then this week is VBS week, and we are... Yes, and we, we are going to Mars, and uh, is it Jesus is out of this world? Is that the, to Mars and beyond, okay, all right. Well, I told our group that was staying here from Missouri this morning the wrong thing, so they didn't ask me to name it, so. Uh, but the theme is the solar system, and so if you look around uh, the church this morning, you'll see some of the decorations up. It's going to be a, a lot of fun, a lot of energy, and a lot of learning uh, in the scriptures as well. And so uh, this morning we're going to have a special prayer and blessing upon those that are helping. So Tracy Mackley is helping with the Bible lesson, and Trish is uh, crafts, Jerry Schumann is music, Drew Starbuck is helping with games, and Caitlin Faber and Becky Williams are doing snacks, and Tara Wolfter is preschool and co director. And Melissa Brown is helping with kindergarten. And Vanessa Best is first and second grade. And Donna Henry is third and fourth grade. And then they will come see me to blow stuff up. I'm doing science. So. <laughs> Except for my temper, right? That's, that's off limits. No, no, it, it's all fun. So, um, and so we're going to lift them up in prayer here during the pastoral prayer time as well. We're also... Um, about two weeks out from closing on the parsonage. So that's a joy as well. So all along, yeah, absolutely. All along they've been saying about February, or February, July 15th, and it looks like it's gonna be pretty close to that. So um, that is a, a joy indeed. And probably next week we'll be talking about help getting things packed and moved and needing assistance with that. Is that still, Jim? I, I should have looked over at you first, but uh, okay. All right. We'll give or take two days, right? That's the over-under is two days. Okay. All right. So uh, this week has, has been tough here in, in Colby um, with the un, very untimely death of, of Josh Barons, and we want to just extend out our prayers to his family um, to those that uh, were involved with first response and those in, at the hospital and, and uh, all just who were involved in that very sad situation. Um, definitely need prayers around that and, and a reminder of anything can be dangerous. And so we just need to, to take care of that. That's definitely not, not the, the, the purpose of all of that, but um, it just... It was very unfortunate. Um, Josh was also uh, Prince Charming in Cinderella Kids. That goes on this weekend. And it's my understanding from Carl, they have a plan B uh, in place. And so, um, we're, but you're gonna get a, a special invite during the announcements, I hope. So, um, and if it doesn't go on, it's gonna be because of this. Also, uh, J.T. Winley, who is um, part of the Saner family. Uh, we've been praying for J.T. now for several months, and J.T. Uh, 
died on the third and so our prayers are with you Leanna and your family as you grieve and say goodbye to JT again way way too soon way too soon and then uh, the Schumanns uh, also um, said goodbye this week to Phil's sister down in Hutch and so prayers and condolences to them as well um, Lynette uh, Ball's mom uh, fell overnight and so Lynette and Ted are in Hayes this morning <coughs> awaiting hip surgery for her 97 year old mother and Lynette's uh, text to me said she's a tough old bird so she'll be fine but at 97 at 97 and nothing is is uh, just procedure so definitely prayers for for her and then Jan uh, uh, Barnum is up in Nebraska uh, went up there yesterday from Oklahoma uh, her dad is not doing very well and so she asked for for prayers for for him uh, during this time uh, probably towards the end of his earthly life uh, also uh, we need uh, prayers for Doreen Mendenhall and Cynthia Henningsen who are both dealing with some some health issues and so uh, prayers be, need to be lifted up for them and uh, last week we we said a prayer for Don and Kathy and, and Don is here this morning after two whirlwind trips to Denver uh, one uh, untimely but uh, uh, he's still awaiting some test results and so uh, Don we just continue to pray for you and Kathy as you make this journey together and so let us uh, let us go to God shall we God in this season of celebration of our nation's independence and the freedoms that are provided to each and every citizen of this country we give you thanks for past leaders who have continued to to not infringe upon the freedom of worship and the freedom to assemble and, and even the freedom to protest uh, we give you thanks for our, our current president and governor and senators and all of those in a legislative making capacity and those in our government and in our bureaucracy we lift them up to you so that our freedoms uh, will remain and the the, the flag of the United States to be flown uh, as a symbol around the world of those freedoms most of all though God we give you thanks for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus uh, for the symbol of the cross and may it also be proudly displayed in in our lives in etched in our hearts and for the word of Jesus to be to be exclaimed throughout uh, all, all of this country and around the globe for the freedom of sin and for the gospel feast to which we will participate momentarily. God, it's especially at these times when we need to hear the good news of Jesus. And so may your Holy Spirit, which is present in, in each of our lives, be especially upon those who are grieving upon Josh and his family and Phil and his family and JT's family uh, all of those that are grieving uh, that are listening in on the radio as well not for the impending harvest uh, which will begin very shortly if it hasn't already in the fields of, of the high plains we call upon it a bountiful harvest to help our farming and our farm economy and our farmers and their families but most of all God we give you thanks for the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus and may that harvest uh, be the one in which we all participate as we share the good news and we share the gospel message uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit amen
scripture reading this morning is Acts 6, 1 through 7. Now, during those days when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait at tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nican, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They held these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Thank you, Alan. He did good with all those names, didn't he? <laughs> Let's pray. God, may the words that I say and the things we all do make our life song sing and bring a smile to you. Amen. Solomon opens up the, the book of Ecclesiastes with the words, Vanities of vanity. All is vanity. And, and closes that little section of his intro to the book with say, by saying there's nothing new under the sun. Well, that's the book of, of Acts, essentially. There's nothing new here that isn't grounded somewhere else in the Bible. For example, our, our, our uh, scripture from last week on Ananias and Sapphira could be grounded in uh, Adam and Eve who were the first couple to, to conspire to sin against God and then got kicked out of the, the Garden of Eden as a result. Or it could be uh, that Ananias and, and Sapphira were like Achon in Joshua chapter 7, who, uh, who took some banned treasure after a battle and stuck it in his tent, even though uh, the rules were you couldn't do that. And then the next time out, the Israelites lost a battle that clearly they should have won. So something was awry, and upon inspection, they found, oh, they found this banned, essentially a banned substance in, in his tent. And as soon as that was removed and he was removed, uh, the Israelites continued on to their, to their victory. Today's story, I think, can be traced all the way back to Exodus chapter 19. Uh, in Exodus 19, uh, the, the Israelites are journeying, and they come uh, really close to the land owned by Moses' father-in-law, Jethro. And so he comes out to see the family. Um, you know, you might have done that, too. When you travel, you stop by and see family and have lunch or make a pit stop, those kinds of things. And so Jethro comes out to see his family, and he just sees Moses exhausted. He's spiritually, physically, relationally just done. In fact, I would say he's, he's beyond done. He's done done. <laughs> Anybody ever been done done in their life, right? That's Moses. And so Moses was just burned out. And his, his leadership bucket was leaking like a sieve. And so Jethro does you know, what any good father-in-law is going to do to his son-in-law. And he begins criticizing him. Right? That's the job, isn't it? It's in the job description when, when you get married. And, and he, he, does, he, he draws out this uh, organizational chart and says, Moses, look at all of the things that you are doing. And so here's the chart that, that uh, Jethro drew out. Well, actually, he didn't, but, uh, but you can get the picture here. And, and, and for those of you who might not be able to read all of those things up there, let me color code it. And, and to show you exactly all of the jobs that Moses was doing out of all of the jobs that the Israelites had. 
There, does that make it easier? So for those of you on the radio, every single job was colored in because Moses was doing all the work. Right? I think the first church's organizational chart would look something very similar to this, only it wouldn't say Moses on there, it would say the 12 or maybe specific uh, in, uh, individuals within the 12 of them. So dividing, dividing the church into, in, in, even into 12, still created a lot of work for each one of those 12. And as a result of that, it still left two, two major problems for the early church. The first was that those on the margins of the community, those without voice, still were being neglected. Our passage of scripture says that the widows were being neglected. And in that society, they would have been the ones without a voice. They would have been a, an outsider rather than an insider. And if we find Jesus on the margins of our society, that's where Jesus was, and that's who was being neglected. So th they were not reflecting Christ, if you will. So just as important as the widows not being, uh, or the widows were being overlooked, is that the first church, I think while filled with the Spirit, had little to no ownership by the group members in the success of the organization. That everything was owned by those, by those 12. It was owned by anybody who fit within one of these boxes, which would have been the, the 12 apostles or 12 disciples. So the words of the hymn would be, Peter is the church, John is the church, no, that's, that's not the way we sing it, is it? Right? It's that we are the church. And that's about as much as you want me to sing, by the way. Typically, it, in, in organizations or, or, or just in families, in, in schools or, or any of those places, it takes a crisis to elevate the need for change to be actually addressed and, and had something done. And this morning scripture is that watershed moment. It's it, essentially, it's the fork in the road. Will the church continue on, on, on one path, which is for the 12 uh, disciples to do everything within the church, or would they allow others than to be a part of leadership and, and vision and planning and visiting and, and distributing the food and making sure the widows have what they need. And, and so, so you had these two forks. And once you go down one fork and one path, it's really hard to jump over to the other side of that, particularly the further and further away that you get. It,